All right, Mary. So let's talk a little bit about the migration of monarchs. Okay. okay. Um, so monarchs are the butterfly that I brought along today. And monarchs are really unique because they have a migration. Mm -hmm. And most butterflies don't migrate. But the monarch butterfly is going to migrate all the way down to Mexico. Mm -hmm. But it's not every monarch that we see. It's only the fourth generation um, in the year, which peaks around uh, late September, early October. And that's the generation that's going to migrate all the way down to Mexico. Okay. It's a long journey all the way down to Mexico. It is. It can be up to about 3,000 miles. Okay. And this is the fourth generation. That's right. Okay. Um, so all the other generations are going to be um, laying eggs. And once those uh, become caterpillars, then butterflies, they're going to be moving further north up into just past the Canadian border until that last generation that migrates south. Okay. Now, what are some of the challenges? Because that's a long journey. So there it have is. to be some challenges along the way. Lots of challenges. Some of them are going to be um, not having uh, fueling Point. So just like we're driving our car and we need to stop at a gas station, <laughs> right. yeah. butterflies have to find some really good food sources. Okay. Um, so things that we can do, plant uh, late blooming um, nectar sources. Okay. Um, also weather, one mm -hmm. bad storm um, along that journey can really affect them. Um, and really loss of habitat is one of the biggest things affecting them today. Okay, loss of habitat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we need to be planning for them then, specifically? So some of my favorites to plant right now, um, and so you want things that are going to be blooming in late September and maybe even into mid-October. Okay. Uh, some of the ones I brought around Goldenrod mm -hmm. is a good one, um, Blazing Star. Uh, the ones I have in here are Late Throughwort and Frostweed. Um, frostweed is sometimes called white wing stem too. Okay. If you look on the stem, it's got little wings on it. So those are a couple that I brought along with me. Miss flower is another really good one okay. too. All right. Now let's talk about citizen science projects. What is okay. that all about? Okay. Citizen science is kind of what it's, what it says. Citizen science is, um, science that anybody can be part of. Okay. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about monarch citizen science, but <laughs> citizen science, um, is a kind of across the spectrum, everything from just reporting if you felt an earthquake to um, recording the first time you saw a hummingbird in the spring or when milkweed is emerging or something okay. like that. So lots of different projects that anyone can be involved in. Okay. And this is something that folks have to call Lichterman Nature Center to not, learn more no, about? Or? Not at all. There, um, if you just go on the internet and you look up citizen science okay. or if you're specifically interested in citizen science on birds or butterflies or plants, just look that up and there are thousands of different projects that you can uh, participate in. Oh, good deal. I know Mr. D mentioned earlier that you actually saw a monarch butterfly when you were, what, fishing? I have. I've, I've lived a number of years down in Mobile, and I've seen them on the beach many times, and I've been out of fishing far enough out, you know, out of sight of land, uh -huh. and I had monarch butterflies land on my boat. Uh, and I don't know whether they're trying to take a shortcut or, <laughs> or whether they got a north wind blew them out and they're kind of going along the coast or or, or what, but uh, it's, you know, sometimes quite a few, you know, you see quite a few out like that. It's kind of, kind of strange. Yeah. So sometimes, um, most of the time they're going to migrate over land, but okay. like you said, a wind can blow them out to sea and they probably saw your boat. And were like, <laughs> Good place to yeah, rest. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so you're, you're right. Weather does play a role Absolutely. in the migration. So just a little wind can just you know, move them off right. course just a little bit. How about that? Yeah. You think they weigh um, a little bit less than a paper clip. Oh. So, and I guess like. they can land on driftwood and rest. Okay. And now they, I don't know what they would find to eat out there. Right, not much. Well, not a whole lot, I don't. Th I wouldn't think. But um, they didn't. They don't have to have a big something to land on. I right. Think. And just kind of hang out for a little bit. Yeah. All right, Mary. We we're looking forward to going outside and tagging monarchs. Right. It's gonna be great. All right. All right, Mary, let's tag some monarchs. Yes. So first, what type of equipment do we need? Okay, so if, we're, if you're interested in tagging monarchs, the first thing you need to do is order the tags. Okay. And so you'll go to monarchwatch.org, order your tags, you'll get some tags, and these are what we're actually going to put on the butterflies here in just a minute. Okay, those are real small tags. They are really <laughs> small, and what's great about them is they're not going to affect the butterflies' yeah. flight pattern or anything like that. So they've done studies, really lightweight, special weather okay. um, proof glue, stuff like that. Okay. Um, really important too, you want to get a toothpick because mm -hmm. this is how we're going to apply the uh, tag wow. to the butterfly wing. 
going to need your data form, which you've yes, got there, which I have. and a pencil. Which I have. And then to catch the butterflies, you want to get a butterfly net. And when you're looking at a butterfly net, you want, want something with a deep pocket. So when you're going over the butterfly, you're not going to damage your plant, okay. and you're not going to damage the butterfly. Makes sense. Okay. okay? And what's on the tags, by the way? Oh, great question. Because I see some writing. So it's pretty small, but on the tags, there's going to be an email address, mm -hmm. the name of the program, which is Monarch Watch, a phone number, and a unique code. It's three letters and three numbers. Okay. So each individual butterfly that's tagged can be tracked from that? where it was tagged to where it was recovered. Okay. So a unique combination um, for each butterfly that we're going to tag. It's pretty neat. Okay, so should we get to tagging? Hey, let's get to tagging. All right. All right. So I brought along some uh, monarch butterflies with okay. me, and tagging only happens on the southern migration in this area, like we talked about, uh, mid-September into the beginning of October. Okay. So if you see monarchs other times of the year, they're great to watch, but we're not going to be tagging okay. them. Okay. Okay? Good to watch. <laughs> okay, so let me reach in here and grab one out. And you've been doing this for a while, right? I have. I see you just go right in and just Yeah, get so not much hesitation. So what we're looking for is we're going to tag in one specific area. We're going to tag on this mitten-shaped cell, okay? So I'm going to read you a number. This is going to be our tag number. It's okay. WCM877. Right. Got it. Okay, so then the okay. first thing we're going to do is get this tag off and get it on the butterfly in case I accidentally let it go. And then I'm gonna give you a little bit more information about it. Okay. Okay, so we've got the tag on there. And then, this is a male. Oh, so you wow. can see the yeah, two see black pat, um, patches there. Um, that only the males have. Okay, okay so we've got a, male, got a male. And these are ones that we actually raised at uh, Lichterman. So okay. you can put an R uh -huh. for reared. Okay. Uh, if you're collecting them in the wild, you just put a W. And then our tagging location is going to be Cordova, right okay. outside the studios. All right, got it. And that's it. So we put our hand out. Give this guy just a second. And there oh, he goes. There he goes. So there they go. How about that? Yeah, good luck. Hope they make it to Mexico. I hope they make it too. So what happens when somebody finds them again? Can you get the okay. process again? Okay, so most of the time people find them, they have no idea what that little tag is. Mm -hmm. So luckily the tags have uh, contact information, okay. email, phone number, so people, if they do find them, can um, call or email with that unique code. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully we'll know that some of our butterflies either made it um, maybe to the Texas coast, but we're hoping we don't hear from them for a couple months and yeah. they make it all the way down to uh, Mexico. Okay, and how long again do you think that process takes for them to migrate down that way? Well, um, they're going to fly maybe 30 to 50 miles a day, wow. so it could take a um, month and a half, two wow. months to get down there, and then they'll spend their winter kind of all huddled together okay. on this one type of fir tree down in uh, the mountains of uh, central Mexico, okay. and then hopefully they survive the winter down there too, and then make the trip back to the Texas coast okay. starting like in March. I hope they make it. I hope so, too. I hope we get some recoveries. That'd be great. That would be great. Thanks again, Mary. Definitely appreciate that demonstration. Thank you for having cool. me. All right.